Hi, my name is Corey, and I will be your Prep Scholar Math instructor today as we learn about a very important topic in math, ratios and proportions. For this lesson, we will first discuss the definitions of ratios and proportions, then we will go over how to solve proportions through cross-multiplication, and then solve some proportion word problems. Let's begin. Let's begin by defining a ratio. A ratio compares two quantities and can be represented by division. For example, let's say that in a certain classroom, the ratio of girls to boys is three to two. We can represent this ratio of girls to boys as three divided by two, or as three to two, or as three colon two. Each of these representations tells us that for every three girls in that classroom, there are two boys in that classroom. Now let's define a proportion. A proportion is, a, is an equation that has two ratios equal to each other. For example, let's say that in a certain classroom, the ratio of girls to boys is three to two. Here we have a proportion because we have set the ratio of girls to boys equal to three to two. Let's also say that we know this classroom has 14 boys in it. We can now solve this equation to determine the number of girls in the classroom. A common way to do this is through cross multiplication. In cross multiplication, we multiply each denominator to the other side. Doing it here, we'll multiply the variable girls by two and then multiply three by 14. This gives us that two times the number of girls is equal to three times 14. We can then solve for the number of girls by dividing both sides of this equation by two. Doing so will give us that the number of girls in the classroom is 21. Let's try some word problems involving proportions now. Here we have a recipe for cake batter. It requires us to use flour, sugar, and milk in the ratio of two to three to five. We can write this ratio like this. To solve this question, we do need to introduce a variable, which we'll arbitrarily choose to be x. So here we have the amount of flour is two x cups, the amount of sugar, 3x cups, and the amount of milk, 5x cups. Next, the question tells us that we are to have 20 total cups of cake batter. So, if we add the flour, sugar, and milk together, we'll get 20 cups of cake batter. Let's plug in the 2x, 3x, and 5x for the flour, sugar, and milk, and then solve for x. So this gives us x equals two cups. Now, let's plug in x equals two cups into the equation for sugar to solve for the amount of sugar. Doing so gives us six cups of sugar. The key to this question was writing each variable as being equal to its ratio number multiplied by x then using other information in the question to solve for x before solving for the amount of sugar that was used in the cake batter mix. Let's try another word problem now. Once again, we will have a recipe for cake batter that has flour, sugar, and milk in the ratio of two to three to five. We can also introduce a new variable for x. So here we have the amount of flour is 2x cups, amount of sugar is 3x cups, and the amount of milk, 5x cups. Next, the question tells us that we are to use six more cups of, flour, uh, of sugar than we do flour. In other words, if we subtract the flour from the sugar, then we will get six cups. Using this equation, we get that x is equal to six cups. Now we can plug in this x value into the equation for milk to solve for the amount of milk that we need to use. Doing so, we find that we need 30 cups of milk. 
Let's do a recap of our ratios of proportions lesson. We learned that ratios give us the relative amounts of different quantities. For example, the ratio shown here tells us that for every three girls we have in a classroom, there are two boys in that classroom. We also learn that proportions are equations where two ratios are set equal to each other, and that they can be solved through cross multiplication. For example here, if we know that there are 14 boys in the classroom, then we can use cross multiplication to see that the number of girls must be 21. Finally, we learned how to add a variable to ratios to help us solve proportion word problems. This is a very convenient way to translate a complicated sounding word problem into one that is more easily managed. Feel free to review this lesson again anytime and Prep Scholar is rooting for you to succeed on test day.